But yeah, what what are you up to today? Everything smooth? Yeah, just getting back home, getting my feet back on the ground, figuring out what packs to send out and all the new people I met. Like I meet like a bunch of new people every trip. So it's good to kind of like circle back and and maintain relationships pretty much. Yeah. You no, being no. one of them. Hell yeah. No, we had a crazy <laughs> meeting. I was shout out to my man Loot, man. Salute to Loot. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, for linking us, bringing us together. I still feel bad. I got pulled into some random meeting, made you guys wait for a minute, but I'm so glad you guys did because that was one of the, the highlights of the week for sure. Was it random or was it like one of the biggest companies in the world, though? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> that remains to be seen, but, um, you know, everyone knows what's going on right now. We got the big goat Corbett in the building. The It's a, it's a special one today, man, because like I always love – putting the spotlight on people who is just like all about the work and like you look through your discography like the amount of the catalog the accolades everything is just absolutely crazy um appreciate it, appreciate it. definitely someone who just like lets the work speak for itself you know like not really right. doing too much as far as like posting i got one with so-and-so or i did this or that you know pretty quiet about letting people know your next move etc but you always come out with one every time so like I said, uh, the big goat, the, <laughs> the Corbett in the building, the producer room powered by the one and only producer culture. My guy, what's going on? Man, just another day, another day in paradise out here doing what we love to do. Definitely another day in paradise. But yeah, like I said, the catalog is crazy. I definitely want to get into like how you built it up to this point, how you, you know, get yourself in the mix with a lot of the stuff going on. But For first sure. and foremost, like I said, we, we met up last week and you got a crazy app you've been working on that I, I had the opportunity to kind of like mess around with it. I think it's going to be one of the most like, you know, revolutionary producer like apps just based on convenience as well as like things that people need. So, I mean, Melody, the app, right. T tell everybody kind of like the vision for it and, and you know, what the big picture is. Well, man, first of all, I appreciate you uh, chopping it up with me. Let me get on here and talk to the people, talk to you, share everything, man. And producer culture, I appreciate you a lot. Um, the app, man, like it's it's been my pet project for the last like probably year or so. And um, it just stems from being a producer and knowing like everything nowadays is about workflow. So I was... You know, I, I just like every other producer uses websites to get loops from when I need sounds or whatever the case may be. And I just always wondering, like, is there a way to improve this workflow? Because sometimes I don't know if I think I, I've talked to a lot of other producers and they shared like they've shared with me the same experience that like, OK, when it's a day I got to I know I got to go load up on samples or loops or whatever. I kind of know like I'm giving about half my day to that to kind of make sure I get enough stuff in the pipeline to make it worth, you know, going and digging through all the ocean of sounds that are out there. And I usually like, whenever I had to do that, I kind of get like a negative feeling like, damn, all right, I gotta go, I gotta go hunt basically. And who knows if I'm gonna even wanna make beats after I do that. And I've lost this creative spark a lot of times doing that. So I was just thinking about ways of like, what would be, better and I was like there's really no app that just gives you gets you straight to the loops and I looked around I'm looking at I couldn't find anything that did that and it kind of seemed like it sh there should be I was like there should definitely be an app that just go get you straight I want to hear loops right now I don't want to jump into a website or anything and that's kind of like what kicked it off and and the melody app is commonly um, described as splice and tinder yeah mixed together i'm married and i was married before tinder ever came out so you know i know the basic functionalities but um i i'm assuming that that's a very good uh that's a very good description because everybody seems to get it when i when, when people bring that up so um ultimately it's just like the fastest way humanly possible that producers can find loops for their beats send them to themselves and get like cooking up as fast as possible no definitely and yeah, I got a I, like I got I got the opportunity to actually hold it in my hand, mess around with it, etc. Um, and it's definitely just that like super, super the functionality of it is 
is super easy. Um, and you know, you, you like something, you swipe, right. You dislike it. You swipe left. It gives you, it gives you more like it, et cetera. You can load something up as soon as you like it. And you kind of spoke to like the convenience and how it chops down time where you got to like go out and dig for stuff, et cetera. And I just want to double down on that. Cause I think that's so important. Like now more than ever people need, it needs to be like as easy as possible. Like even I was just explaining this to a pretty big artist today who I was working on one of the smaller artists signed to him. And like in the description of YouTube, they have his Instagram like written out. I'm like, right. bro, you're going to make people pick up their phone and look at it and type it in letter by letter. No, um, hell no. Yeah. You got to just, you got to just make it a link where they can click and it goes right there. So I just want to say that too. The other thing that I thought was super impressive about the app was how it's you have like a tight knit community of who's on there and who you're accepting and who gets stuff posted on there. Cause a big problem with some of these other places seems to be somebody steals a loop and uploads it. And then this happens and that happens. And then it like becomes a big problem, but speak to a little bit about like the, the like in-house team that's actually like uploading the content on there. Yeah. That's one of the ways we wanted to like separate um, because with, uh, with a lot of the other sites that do it, they have so much, coming in the back end as far as guys uploading the loops that it's virtually impossible to vet every single thing that comes on there vet it for quality vet it for like if it's actually that person's intellectual property mm -hmm. stuff like that so one of the things we wanted to make sure was we had a more of a boutique situation where we literally listen to every loop that goes on you know we've got mondo who's the back end he takes care of all that type of stuff he's He's checking in with every producer that we have. We have about 15 guys that we that we right now are, you know, building with. And we will expand for sure. But we wanted to make sure and keep it tight, like you said, because it's it's like a boutique. We want to make sure everything that's on there is is the of the highest quality. And if we had 100 dudes right now, I just don't think or girls like if we had 100 people uploading loops, like I just don't know if we could fully do that with the the size of the company is, is really small right now. So as we expand, we can probably do more, but that's a big part of the process too. And let me say this, because this is kind of interesting. You said like about convenience and how, like making it as easy as possible for people. Like that's such a big part of the game. And like me being starting out in the loop game, like that was really like one way how I was able to like thrive was making my loops as easy and accessible as possible to um, like, and so I was working really close with Hit Boy for the last couple of years. And I just kept thinking, like, how can I make it even easier? How can I how can I even change the process of how I get him the loops? Like I was trying to think, like, could I make an app that just he has that I could just upload loops directly to his phone? So he doesn't even have to go in the email to get the loops or whatever. He doesn't even and that kind of that was also kind of some a little bit of the process of making the app too. I was thinking like, well, that would be a good idea for anybody's phone, really. Like I would love to be able to get my loops to as many producers that would want to, you know, be able to jump in there. So just what you said, like making it as easy for the for the big guys as possible is like everything no, right now. Definitely, definitely. Um that's so true. And I always say, like, you always gotta just like reinvent yourself and figure out ways that you can be like a value add to people but you even right. took that kind of thinking into another step which is like the people that i'm already a value add to how do i even become more valuable slash make what i'm doing more convenient for them which i think is just a, a really really interesting way of like peeling it back even an extra layer let me ask you this question so what do you think about this i have my own thoughts but i know people say different things or whatever you spoke to like, okay, I want to have it a super easy, convenient way. So now my loops are on Hip Boy's phone. Well, wait, I would like my loops to be on everybody's phone. But if you just start like popping up with placements here and there from this producer, that producer, because the app blows up, whatever, do you think mm -hmm. that like waters down your sound or your brand at all? Or is it like, man, forget it. We're just going to start running and going. Uh, I mean, if, if it's like big placements, then it definitely doesn't water down. Yeah. But if you're if you're saying like the exclusivity factor, um, I think that there is an exclusivity factor. And I know for a fact that 
a lot of the bigger producers don't want to get loops that they know a lot of other people are getting. So like really the, the, the app itself is a little bit more for like the everyday producer that's like on their grind on their way up. Um, we're going to do in, activations with the bigger guys where we release packs to them or they might release some packs within the system. But if you're asking just generally like having too much like having too much stuff out there is bad. Uh not really as long as it's getting to the right the right places you know what i mean yeah no i'm i'm a big believer in like to put it out there like because i know some people kind of say that about like tight beat producers like oh this and that but even like i mean shit tnt is one of the biggest type beat producers ever basically and he was just in the studio at future so clearly having stuff yeah. out there like that's not a bad thing also i didn't even think about this but if i'm a producer and I send the same loop to four or five different people. When one person uses it, this and that person still might use it. But if mm -hmm. I have it on the app, when one person purchases it, uses it, whatever, it's not no longer in that in that library, right? Well, if it was like a major placement or something, we would pull it from the library. But it's kind of like a beat stars. Got it. You know what I mean? Like you, you can people can use the loop. You know, 10, 20, 30 producers could use it. But once it blows up to a certain point, then we'll, when there's negotiations, we'll pull it. But there's been instances on Splice where loops have been used. Uh, I think there's like a DaBaby song and then there's like some other like pop song within the same year that used the same loop, like did not alter it whatsoever. Both of them were top 40 songs. You know what I mean? And I can't speak to like, I know for a fact that there wasn't any problems with that on the back end. But the, both of the songs came out and did well. You know what I mean? So there's space for people to still use loops multiple times. Um, but if somebody gets something that's like, all right, this is this is really going, we're definitely going to pull from pull it from the system and make sure that that's exclusive to that contract or whatever. Oh, yeah, man. Well, definitely. And you kind of spoke to, uh, you know, you connecting with Hip Boy in the last few years and just figuring out ways. So we definitely want to get into kind of your story and how you're able to build it up to that point but like i said first and foremost everyone go check it out melody the app make sure you check it out play with it i think it's going to be one of the say, craziest things that's going to it's going to change a lot for a lot of different people whether it's people looking for an outlet or you know people looking for new fresh stuff i think it's going to be crazy for sure so congrats again on that that means a lot coming from you, man. You were uh, blowing my mind with some of the stuff you were teaching me last week. So, oh yeah, me it means a lot. We're going crazy, we're going crazy. But <laughs> said enough about me. What um, like, how does it all start off for you? Like right now, you're currently uh based in Kentucky. Is that where you're from? Where when did music first enter your life? Like, how did it all kind of kick off in the early days? I didn't. Ha I didn't do any music, and yeah, I still live in Kentucky. I'm here. I go to LA like once every month. I do about a week, and then. That's about all I can take out there and I got to get back to normal life again. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I didn't start doing music until like right out of high school. Me and my three like idiot friends all moved into an apartment together, like literally straight out of high school. It was a, just a straight party for three months and then everybody goes their separate ways or whatever. But one of my friends had FL like two or three cracked on their computer. Yeah why i have no idea because this person never made music a day in their life i you know how some people just like stealing things and having random shit like he was probably one of these people or something like that so he had it on his computer i was just messing around with it and like i started just catching a little bug for it like i was like this is actually pretty cool because it was more technology than musical like i didn't because i didn't really understand the musical side of it and um so I was just like messing with it that whole summer. Then I went to college, but I didn't, I went to college to play D3 basketball. So I didn't really have a future <laughs> in basketball <laughs> at that point. And I, it took me about a year to realize that, like, I don't think I'm going overseas. I don't think I'm going to, you know, but the music, I was just like getting so, I was spending a lot of time just still doing that. And, um, and then when eventually I just like, I just realized like, this is really what I want to do. So I left that school and then I ended up going to IPR, which is in Minneapolis. And shit, I mean, I, I learned a lot about engineering. 
learned, met a lot of producers in that city. I came up, really, I came up out of that city in music. And that's where a lot of my like connections lie. But after going through school and then spending like five years there, I went to, I, I came back home because I got signed by a producer named High Tech, who like, if you're into like a little bit more like 2000s and back a little bit, like High Tech was a really notable producer in that time. Produced like G Unit, like he was under Dr. Dre for a while. Um, and he lived in Cincinnati. So that was crazy because that's like the city that I live closest to. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got signed to him and I told him, I was like, he was like, I only want to sign people that live or that live in this area. And so I told him I lived there and I didn't at the time. So I like, it was actually the perfect time because my wife had to come back here to be with, do some family stuff. So like we ended up just moving back off the strength of like all right i think this is going to be a good opportunity like i thought i was going to be on yeah i thought this was it like i thought i was i was gone out of here and uh we didn't really do as much work together as i hoped we would and sort of that that basically just brought me all the way back home and i was not really i didn't really have anything super crazy going i got like a random uh meek mill placement because one of his smaller producers like stole one of my beats offline and it got on a meek or actually one of bangladesh's producers stole the beat gave it to bangladesh like it was his beat bangladesh put his tag on it it ends up on meek's album and that ends up being my first placement that's crazy and that's um that's the classic record yeah 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 damn and that's on uh i mean that's one of the bigger meek albums period too that's crazy for a first placement that's a crazy right. story to have it come together it was a complete it was a complete fluke scenario type yeah. situation but but to your point it's like just sometimes just being out there exactly can create opportunities that i wouldn't have been eligible for you know otherwise so being out there was a benefit man that's a super fact um that's true i said that too damn you said it. Uh, <laughs> so going back a couple steps so you and your homies move into an apartment fresh out of high school. I can probably foresee some issues happening like immediately. But did you before that point, just seeing FL whatever one, two, three cracked on his laptop? Did you have any sort of like musical background? Like was your family musical? Did you play any instruments as a kid or no? No, no at all. That's pretty interesting yeah. to me because I just feel like it's such like a split thing where it's like either people had a lot of musical background and instruments and around or whatever when they were younger and then they're like a super big producer now or it was basically nothing it seems like there's not really much of a middle ground so that's super that's kind of true that's kind of true usually yeah. it's like i never played an instrument in my life or i played in church my whole life and like exactly. I could do anything. yeah um i wanted to ask you this you kind of went went breeze through it a little bit as far as like getting signed like what were you doing like what did you do to even pop up on his radar for him to even want to sign you and then for it to all come together like were you working with a bubbling artist in the area and your sound caught on were you just sending him stuff via the internet like how'd you even get on his radar for him to want to sign you yeah like twitter was still like not totally new but it was like people were still open to to get messages on twitter mm -hmm. And I had like the way I was making money at the time was just through SoundClick, which is like the older version of BeatStars pretty much. And I was making like some decent money for like what my situation was at the time. Um, and that was just keeping me going, making beats every day. But I would, you know, I was following everybody I wanted to follow. And he said like, yo, anybody from Cincinnati area, like send me music. I'm looking to build with people. and any producer out there knows that's the green light you probably have about 10 minutes from the beginning of that message going out there before that email fills up whatever email they put out there yeah. so I was lucky I was luckily like soon enough to be able to get him to hear it and like the next day he sent me a, a email back like hey what's what's going on let's let's tap in and it was just off the strength of like three beats I sent him in one beat that had a hook on it. Um, but it was a different time because like people were more open to just getting emails from people back then. 
it's kind of like the DMs now. Yeah. Of back then. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one other thing I just want to touch on quick, because, you know, and, and then we'll we'll move on to some of the what happens next. But I think there's, there's so many producers and it sounds like you kind of lived through it. And granted, every situation's different signing to this person signing to this producer signing to this publisher signing this that like it's all different no matter where you're going or what's happening but like how quickly did it take for you to realize like once once you get signed or signed to whoever people a lot of people think it just means like oh well i'm on now everything is going to be easy but no i mean i feel like most of the time that's the time to double down and work even twice as hard yeah, I definitely thought that was what it was going to be just because I had so little knowledge of fact behind the what was going on behind the curtain. And I still doubled down like I didn't ease up. It just really the opportunities weren't there as much as I thought they were, mm-hmm. you know, and every situation is different, but it's definitely not the time to stop <laughs> when you get whenever you get signed. It is like definitely t- the time to push the pedal to the maximum Yeah, and also know like signing doesn't mean you get to like kick back and like you could say like all right I doubled down and I made more beats or something but you also got to double down and make more relationships and that side of things that I think most producers think that that's part's going to get easier because now you're on a label and like they're going to do all this like extra work for you or something and that was the thing that surprised me the most is like no nah, you still got to go out there and, and do your moves like it's not, it's not just going to start opening every door for you. Yeah. No, that's exactly true. Couldn't agree more. Um, so what kind of happens next? It, it doesn't pan out the way that you had hoped for and you end up right back in Kentucky, like kind of back to square one. You do have a meat mill placement though. And yeah. then what happens from there? Like, when did you start doing, when did you start like moving around? You, you mentioned earlier, you come out to LA like once, once a month is that something you started doing early on were you moving to different places like how'd you really hone in on those relationships and then you know the placements with all these big names just start pumping out the crazy thing was like coming back home was a destined thing because that's where I met the person that eventually plugged me into all the situations that I'm in now and if I hadn't come home I probably I for sure would have never ran into this person unless he we ran into each other way later down the line where we couldn't really connect like that you know what I mean but I, I, I'm back home and like nothing's moving I'm not really getting you know I'm, I'm cutting down trees to make ends meet and like recording people at my house which I don't really love doing but I you know I do because it's what you got to do to keep it keep the lights on but I met I know I made an EP with this kid from back home uh, a rapper by the name of trademark Aaron actually high tech told me he was like yo you guys should do a project together so we did put it out it didn't like do crazy numbers or anything but around the city it was being heard because a uh, trademark would go to all the studios and play it for everybody because that's just what you do that's what when you make new music you go play it for everybody and so um, he played it at this studio we're like the biggest engineer in the city. Uh, his name is Sonny. Sonny the engineer he goes by Sun Zoo now. He heard it and he was like, oh, where, who produced it? Because this doesn't sound like anybody. And then through that, that's how he and I connected in like 2016, 15 or 16. And you got to do an interview with him at some time because he's like, he's a, such a character and he knows how to tell these stories with so much like more yeah. like amazing coincidences and all that shit. And there are for some amazing coincidences, but like we literally, we linked up four or five times over the next year, never did music. One of those times we talked about everything you're not supposed to talk about religion, politics, race, all the things that like everybody tells you, like don't speak on, like that's yeah. all we talked about for like a year. And that somehow created this crazy bond between us. And anyway, the trademark trademark Aaron told me he's hooked up with like Hit Boy and all these other people. And I'm sitting there thinking like, well, if he's so connected with us, like, what's he doing here? Like, why is he, you know, you hear a lot in the industry, most of which is not true. So I'm sitting there thinking like, yeah, okay, we'll see, you know, and he was cool or whatever. But one day we were sitting there, Hit Boy called him. So I'm like, oh, shit, all right. Like, you actually do know this guy or whatever. That's kind of crazy. So I was like, 
bro, why don't we just go out there and see if we can bring something to the table? You know, like, let's see. And he was like, ah, all right. Like he had never even thought about it. He'd been going out there for a couple of years back and forth, helping engineer and stuff, but he was making more money back home. So he was kind of chilling at home or whatever. And uh, he was like, all right, cool, let's go. So we go out there. Um, you know, we get the Airbnb set up and I'm just like, I'm still kind of nervous because I don't know if it's like legit relationship or if it's kind of like a weak relationship or whatever. Um, so like he, we get there and he's like calling hit boy, he's not answering. I'm like, shit, we just spent all this money to come out here and try to like get plugged in with some situations and it's not looking good. And then finally, like he hit back, he was like, yeah, pull up. And we pulled up in there. It was probably like, this is when Hit had a house up in the hills or whatever. And that's where his main studio was at. So we put up and he was doing a session with the artist and there was like 15 people in his like studio room. It's not, it wasn't like the hugest room ever. So I'm like, damn, this is like a real Hollywood type shit right now. Like this is a real crazy session. And my boy Sonny just went in there and like took over the room. It was crazy. You know, like he, he was a, he was being a hundred percent factual about what his stature was in that circumstance and he so he he carried a lot of weight in that circle and then by him bringing me in he kind of let me get, have a space in there to slowly show that I could bring some value and you know he really opened the door into that situation for me this was like 2016-17 era man a few really good lessons in there. I always want people to remember, like, there's nothing stronger than a good cosign. And, like, people got to think about that, too, because a lot of times someone will see that so-and-so follows you on Instagram and they'll just DM you and ask you to connect them. And right. first of all, it's like, okay, it's a little opportunist. Come on, man. Like, you're going to ask how my day was or anything. But on the other hand, it's like that person asking, like, you got to just remember like if you're trying to get to this artist and so and so is connected but he or she is like a goofy and that's the one connecting you that's that could be bad what, what they're gonna think of you too so you just gotta kind of yeah. like pick and choose but um i want to get more into that session but i gotta ask too because i just remember when i first got to la and i was like 19 20 or whatever that was your first like time being in the hills for like a session and shit it's crazy right that first time yeah, man, it was like literally from being from where I'm from, everything that I know about L.A. is like a movie. Yeah. You know, like I don't I didn't know all the like normal parts, but to go straight from like the airport Airbnb to that with the house, with the tennis court and the grotto and the yeah. pool and all that shit. I'm like, damn, is this just how it is out here? Huh? I know. You know, but but I, I want to touch back on something, too, because this is something that I want. I would want to know if I was a younger producer coming up, like don't miss the, of what I said about me and Sonny, mm -hmm. we talked and linked up for a full year and we never asked each other for anything other than our time together and just checking in and saying, seeing what each other was doing. He wasn't asking me to do this for me. I wasn't asking him to do that. He, we were both, we both just saw that each other were good at what we did and we wanted to, gain from each other just from a relationship standpoint let me know what you know like tell me what you think about this because that gives me a different aspect and so like creating that bond was one of the most important things that ever happened and we weren't intentionally doing it it was just people being friends in a relationship so like the dms and all that's good for sure but you never know where that if you would have told me like the person that was going to plug me in all the way was it lived in my city like not even in like the he lived on my side of the river like it's Cincinnati which is the city and then you cross the river into Kentucky where I live he lived on my side like he we probably lived 15 miles apart like people don't think that there's anyone in their cities that that that's plugged in but everybody doesn't talk about everything they do so you really got to invest in your local scene and invest in the people who are around you. And I, I think you'll, you'll find a lot of movement just out of the people who, who are right there, like available to you. No, 
That's so true. And I want to, I want to, I want to hit two of those points. Like one, I'm from Rochester, New York. Like there's not too much of a real, like, like immersed music scene. There's a music scene too. And there's a lot of artists coming up that I rock with for sure, but there's not much of like an immersed, like super well-known music scene. But once I started coming out here and looking back, I'm like, damn, so-and-so from loopholes is from there. And they got, oh, they're all over Choppa's album and Tusi and, oh wait Ness is from there and he he's uh he's got a boogie and he's got a Drake place when he's got Kodak Black and then I'm like you know so-and-so is like Jay-Z's main engineer I'm like so you never really know unless you're like looking around so that's something smart too but bro I'll also say like that genuine relationship of just like rocking with somebody not asking for anything building it up like you know you might be able to reach out to someone and connect quick and then you get a quick placement and it's like transactional this and that and you know that might take a week or a month or whatever and it might be quick but the things like that always like build up to a point where like something amazing happens and that's like you know there's there's been a lot of guys who I've been rocking with since I first got to LA that you know I'll tell them like hey I'll send your stuff to so-and-so or so-and-so or so-and-so and it doesn't pan out right away but like you know me and a producer um who have been working for like years sending stuff for years since 2019 nothing we just got an estg placement finally and it's like Ooh, man it was kind of worth go. it yeah then there like you doing whatever but and and doesn't it feel amazing when you yeah. when it's that way versus just like something new and it's like oh that's cool but somebody that you know is invested in like in the the back and forth and then you get a win together like that that feels good like that feels like how it should be yeah, it's all about the win. It's definitely all about the win. But all right, try to try to take yourself back to that like moment. So you're just looking around like, damn, this is crazy. Like, you know, you're from a, a, a city that's somewhat similar to mine. Like you've never seen anything like that at all. Never. You're just looking around. So what happens next? Like bro takes over the session. He gives you a chance to kind of show off what you got. You just start networking on the side. Like how, how does it kind of go from there? Well, no, nah, not in that session because I was just like, you know overwhelmed by the situation so I just kind of like found my spot back in the back and sort of watched I was just soaking up game like there was this amazing songwriter that was I was watching her have this conversation with the artist and I had never really seen that process but she was figuring out how to help the artist make a song but she had to start with a conversation like so what what, what what's your vibe today what are you on today because if you just try to force a song on somebody that's not going to stick but if if the artist tells you like oh I just broke up with my boyfriend or whatever then you know you can start a song in that vein and it's going to stick and it's going to be more meaningful to them so I got to watch her do that that was cool and I just played the background for like the longest really like that whole week I was just kind of there you know I wasn't sticking my neck out I was just whatever was needed to be done I was doing those little things, you know, like, and not trying to overdo anything. I didn't even say like, oh, I got beats. I was just waiting for Sonny to look for opportunities to say, yeah, my boy does that, blah, blah, blah. But I think on that first trip, the only impact I made was Hit had just moved into that house and he had a guest house that he wanted to convert to a studio. So I got to help like go to Target and some other store and buy like a table and some bass traps and stuff and like fill out the studio with like a some speaker you know what I mean just like get all a little couch and a table and I think that was my biggest contribution that week but I left feeling like all right like I added something yeah. to the table it was small but and I wanted to play my beats every day I wanted to play my loops and all that type of, actually I didn't even have loops at the time but I wanted to play my beats and Sonny was more he was like just wait wait don't try to force this thing like I'm telling you like you'll find spots but you just really got to be understanding of the energy and I really didn't at the time I just thought like if I play my beat like everybody's gonna go crazy and like but why would somebody want to put my beat in front of the artist when everybody else makes beats right you know what I mean like when I think about it now it doesn't even make sense but uh -huh. at that time in my mind I was like yeah everybody should just want to use my beats like 
sometimes you're so like so, blinded to what you think in the moment that it's like you look back on it later like that doesn't even make any sense like what am i even no doing? no no that's what like i, I always tell people like when someone so says like oh i'm gonna sign to someone and then they're gonna be able to get me placements with this or that person because they're signed there i'm like bro you really think this guy can call a little baby and tell him what like there's no chance like that's what it's kind of it's it's like the same thing it's like you gotta just go into it open-minded like but i think you did you did such a good th- uh, job of just playing it cool not overstepping figured out a way to contribute even in a non-conventional way because there's nothing worse than just being dead weight so that's right. you that, on that, that was my whole goal is like i want it to be like oh when the when the white dude's here like things are a little better like hmm. shit gets done a little more or like there's less things that go bad or something that was just literally like my whole mo was like just do bring positive value to the situation but like through being i got to watch the process i got to watch all this stuff and that's actually how i figured out to do loops i didn't even know people did loops like that and i just realized like no one's gonna let me press play on beats like it's just not gonna happen i was i had probably been going out there for like three months like seeing where i could fit in and i was like being the doing the whole beat is not gonna work here it's not happening so I started thinking about doing the loops and even though there were some guys doing that in 2017, there was nowhere near the saturation that there is now. Like we're talking five years ago, damn near. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking about these loops and like that, I just got stuck in my head. Like that's my way because I just make everybody's life easier if I can just not do the drums. And uh, so I just started stacking up, making loops, making ideas, making loops. And it wasn't, I swear, like, it wasn't even a thing. Like, I'm sure Key Beats was out. I'm sure, like, some of the big guys were already doing it under the radar, but it wasn't as, like, a known thing. So I had just been making these loops, and I had, like, a nice little folder of them. And I don't, I didn't tell Hit I was doing loops, but he just knew I was a producer, and he knew I could engineer. Um, and then one day, I was, it was just me and him sitting in his his studio at his house, and I was just kind of waiting to like help with something or record him. I don't know, I was just in there. And he turns his sh- over his shoulder, like I'll never forget this moment. And he was like, You got any uh, you got any like perfectly edited loops I could hook up for Travis? Cause Travis Scott was about to come through or whatever. And I'm like, as a matter of fact, yes, I have, I do, right here in my pocket, right here. Like <laughs> it was like the moment I was like kind of waiting for in a sense. And um so I just, I got to hand it to him. He loaded them up. He made a couple beats on the spot right there. And um, I didn't, I wasn't there for the session that he had with Travis, but nothing ended up going through for that. But like a couple weeks later, I was back home and he called me or he texted me and he was like, hey, when's the next time you're out here? Because like, I want to figure out how me and you can really, you know, lock in and do business. And because, uh, he had got one of the beats that he made out of that pack. He got on like BB Rexa, who was like a pop artist. Uh, he did, he got a song with them. And I think he, he saw like, oh, well, if I have a loop person that's like locked in with me, that's better than just getting them from whoever, you know what I mean? Like, he's smart enough to understand having that in-house is gonna be a better situation. Definitely. So that was kind of the kickoff point of where our relationship changed from like, me just being a dude that was around because I was cool with Sonny and I can engineer and do a little stuff here and there. So like, oh, I see that you could be this piece to the puzzle that I'm building. You know what I mean? It was definitely right place, right time. Um, and like you said, just being able to bring value in any way possible, that was what let me be sitting in that seat at the time. Yeah, most definitely, man. I mean, the, the biggest takeaway to me is that like, you just can't rush timing. Like you really, you really waited it out. It was, it was perfect timing and it all worked right when it was supposed to. So that session happens, you end up leaving. He has the session with Travis, nothing goes through, but from then you kind of become one of his go-to guys. And then how do just all these crazy placements start stacking up? Like is it mostly him hitting you and now you're just getting the constant flow of sending them stuff or how does it kind of go from there? Yeah. I tried to like figure out like, how do you want me to like, cause I could keep flying out here and handing you these folders, but 
like if I send stuff, like what's the best way to send it? And he just let me know, like, here's the best way that I like to, for my workflow, here's how I like to get things. And literally to this day, I still, you know, we still do the same, you know, song and dance of how, when I make loops, I make a pack. I usually make about 15, 20, and then they go straight to him. But uh, like, so I started doing that and he just started using them on like, like 60, 70% of the beats he was making. And so I would start just getting calls from his manager or he would let me know like, oh, we got one with, you know, like Machine Gun Kelly or some random, you know what I mean? Or lots of other artists. We got a few decent ones. And then 2019, he, we did Racks in the Middle. Racks in the Middle. Um, and that was off of, I had flown out there and I had a new pack for him and I gave him the pack and he, we started making a beat and this was like an epic night because there was like, his, and he was, he's in a studio that he's in now at Chalice. Like it's not the biggest room ever. It probably fits comfortably like 10 people and there's probably 15 people in there and it was a mixture of producers, friends, uh, A&Rs. It's usually not like that. Like he keeps his room pretty quiet and low key, but for whatever reason, Chalice was just going crazy that night. And so he pulls this loop up, he starts making the beat. And then uh, G Dave, another uh, collaborator that works with us a lot. Like he's, he's from Kansas city. He's, he's real tied in. He was tied in with hit boy pretty much since I was and probably a little bit before I was. And so we always worked together. He started doing drums and, I came in and added like some more melodies on top of it and arranged out the beat a little bit. And um, then Roddy, Roddy Rich walks in with like a bunch of his, his people. And this was like right before he became like crazy, like mm -hmm. Die Young was already out. The hype was there for sure. And he was going, you know, he was going up and hit being like, just, he knows how he, he doesn't waste time. You know what I mean? He's been around the game long enough. So we were literally just finishing the beat. He's like, well, shit, you should just jump on this real quick. Cause he knows that Roddy works really quick or whatever. So like he, uh, Roddy was like, all right, cool, whatever. Mind you, the, now there's like 20 people in the studio. Right. And there's no engineer in the studio. So I had to do the engineering and I'm like, iffy. Like I, I can get the job done, but it's not like how these guys are in LA where they're like, you know, crazy fast or whatever. So I'm like sweating bullets. We put the beat in Pro Tools and getting ready to record Roddy. And he does his first line. He does it like four times and then he's like, all right, cut it. And I thought what that means is delete that because I'm about to like really say it for real how I want to do it. But what he meant was take the last one I just did and then fly that to the right spot. You know what I mean? It was just lingo that I wasn't up on at the time so i've probably deleted like four i probably kept deleting it like four times and he started like getting loud like he's like nah bro like i'm saying cut it like he was like getting frustrated with me or whatever and i'm not knowing what he means i'm drenched in sweat at this point hit finally comes over he's like hey what he means is do this he explained it to me and so once he told me that i was you know i was keeping up with it but i was feeling like i was going so slow and i was just like worried but we end up cutting the hook and then he cut another verse to it. And finally, like we got that part done. You know, his crew leaves, a couple of people leave. And like, I felt like I had just gone through like a, like a marathon or something like that. Like I was just so physically drained from just sitting there and making sure I didn't fuck up. Like, wow. <laughs> and, uh, that's that's how like him like us making the beat and then him getting on the song like kind of came about man you probably almost can't even enjoy the song to its fullest when it comes out you just think about all that but hey I'll oh hell no yeah. i mean i enjoyed i enjoy it to the fullest fullest what do you yeah. mean because i could have i could have messed it up like i could have like made the song not happen so yeah. like the fact that it did i was like Phew. shout out to hit boy man coming through when you Save the day one two boom 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 man it's crazy and then um so damn i didn't even realize that that was the first like real deal solidified hit and then 
kind of how does it go from there? Obviously, Hip Boy's so tapped in with Big Sean and Nas and Chris Brown. Is that you guys just keep working, getting closer and closer, and then a lot of those placements end up just coming from that? Yeah, it's mo it's it's really majority like me just constantly sending him the new loops every time I make a new pack. It just goes to him and and he's faithfully just kept hitting my my folder like you know and eventually um it led to me signing to sony through him mm -hmm. so i'm basically signed to him and which just gives him even more incentive to keep using my packs because he's getting you know what i mean it's overall it's still building into his discography even more and um like that really solidified solidified their relationship you know for the long term man Oh, yeah, definitely. But man, it's so cool to hear your story. So cool to kind of walk it from point A to point Z. Um, so many good lessons along the way. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it with us. Uh, yes, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of thinking, I mean, in closing, like, you know, what would some of your advice be to kind of like the up and coming producer just trying to figure it out, feeling like they're just hitting a wall? I mean, it seems like you were there at one point, kind of like what's something you want to tell them slash something you wish you knew back then that you kind of know now? I think like just shoot your shot on like the DMs and stuff for sure, because why not? Mm -hmm. As long as you're not being obnoxious and bothering people, but really like invest in the network that's available to you and don't downplay just because you might live in a small town or you don't, you don't live close to like Atlanta or one of the bigger cities there's people that do things in those cities that probably live closer to you than you think. So being a name that people talk about in your area, it, it holds value. That's been my experience. And that's what I would encourage people to do because it's like you said, like being in the mix allows for things to happen for you. Like being out there, like I would upload my beats to YouTube if I was a new producer, I would, I would get, I'd be on YouTube. I would be DMing people. I would be in the mix in my city with artists. That would be like my approach right now if I had to just start from scratch right now. Hell yeah, definitely. Well, like I said, we appreciate it so much. Make sure everybody goes check out Melody the app. Um, and yeah, man, everyone stick to it. So much good information in this one. We appreciate it big time. The producer room powered by producer culture. Corbett the GOAT, thank you so much. Can't thank you enough. Man, Carl, appreciate you.